Hey, welcome to Butcher Bay Rejects. I'm Mark. I'm Greg. How you doing, nerds? What's up, bud? What's up? Not much. What's going on with you over there in your neck of the woods? Oh, just collecting action figures. You know me. I see something, oh, really? I gotta buy it. <laughs> Ripped it right out of the package, no doubt. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Working out all those joints, posing them. It's 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 all the fun. Thirty-two points of articulation. And I use every single point. You got the GI Joe with the kung fu grip. I did get Snake Eyes with uh, with Timber the Wolf. Oh, the okay. GI Joe, cool. uh, that GI Joe uh, exclusive there. Cool. Well, the Wolf is awesome. I've never seen. Well, the question is, are you going to get that hybrid GI Joe Transformers one? So that's oh, the big question. Oh hell, yes. Yeah, okay, that made for you, I guess. Oh my God, come on, that's like a no-brainer. All right, just checking. <laughs> All right, gang. So we're going to kick off this episode with uh, well, Pam and Tommy. Pamela goes down, uh, well, episode six called Pamela in Wonderland. I'm going to call the episode Pamela Goes Down the Rabbit Hole of the no Deposition. Uh, we're going to really review the American underdog, the Kurt Warner story starring Zach Levy, Nana Paquin, and the latest installment of the Kingsman franchise. Uh, called The King's Man, starring Ray Fiennes, Jim Arden, and Jaman Hunsu. So let's kick it off with some Pam and Tommy. So basically, yeah, no, we didn't get any uh, any Uncle Milty again, or, you know, we just got Pamela. And from all accounts, what I read was that that whole deposition really did happen that way. Like, so your, oh, heart, that your heart was just... brutal. Yeah, your heart just goes out to her this episode, doesn't it? <laughs> like, like, you know, if any, if, if there was ever a... Poster boy for the prick lawyer. Give it to that boy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I read up on their like their defense was so flimsy. It's like, well, you did. Uh, you posed in Playboy. and You did a sex tape. So you you did this on purpose. You're an exhibition. You know, this was their whole. Yeah. Their whole their whole uh, defense. Like, oh, are you really kidding me? And then. Well, I can get- see their point as to trying to make it. Uh, you know, you voluntarily did this. Therefore. You, you you leaked it on purpose. Well, no, they did not. Everyone else leaks it on purpose. You know, your Kardashians and your whatnot. Oh, oh, oh I don't know what happened. No, no, no. They really didn't. Uh, yeah, I know. Because look, look, the uh, the internet was uh, it was <laughs> you know just getting started. It so was yeah, me. it was in its infancy <laughs> at that point. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 they didn't. But yeah, your Kardashians, yeah, definitely did. Yeah. No, I mean. It, it looked very much like they were the, the the defense lawyers were taking the extreme moral high ground you know you don't you you you've you you don't consider posing naked as a sex act you got paid for sex that makes you a prostitute you know like you could see just the jaw dropping and like want to you know you just want to reach across the table and just strangle this fuck well, yeah, I'm forcing her to watch the BJ scene in the car. Well, you know, weren't you concerned with truckers uh, sitting high in their cab that they could see down on you? You know, and then I like the, the whole. Scene can you identify scene. identify the two people in this clip? Like, yeah. come on, really? Yeah, it's my tape. Yeah. <laughs> oh God, this is horrible, horrible, horrible. <laughs> yeah, no, but I mean, it was cool, kind of seeing the flashbacks of her of her. Uh, up well, that's like, it exactly happened that way. I, I remember her. That's how she got discovered. I think it was at a BC Lions game. I remember that. Like she mm-hmm. was in the stands and that was it. You know, that's how easy it was. I just Rear thought was it was launch. cool. They actually had like BC Lions playing. It was like, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> the Labatt, Labatt beer and everything. Oh, you yeah, know? yeah. I mean, yeah, no, it was, uh, that's exactly how it happened. <laughs> does it mean or does she just attract prick boyfriends? Yeah. Yeah, she does. Well, that's the classic, you know, you go for the bad boy. That's, uh, that's what you get, you know? I mean, only, only now, you know, I'm sure she's, she's probably shying away from the bad boys, <laughs> but, uh, well, bad I'm, boys I, are I, fine, are fine when you're young, but you know, and I'm, I'm sure that that first boyfriend just kicking himself in the, in the ass for not being nicer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? If I was just nice to that one, I would have rode that r- that train all the way to the station. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he could have been with her. Uh, it could have been with her at the Playboy Mansion instead of her mom, you know? Yeah, Saying exactly. It's okay, okay to get the boob job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I found that just like the most uncomfortable conversation. Mom, should I get my tits done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, God made you perfect, but, you know, if you think you can improve on God, uh, then do it, you know. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how many moms would say, yeah, go for it. 
perk those suckers up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh Lord. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah, basically that was it to the episode. It wasn't much, uh, no rag. That, no that was a short episode. Yeah, wasn't on top it? of that. Yeah. It was very short. Yeah. I mean, you know, photo shoot all aside. I'm like, geez, my photo shoots don't look like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Actually my photo shoots kind of do look like that. I just don't have that location to shoot in. Like a playboy mansion. <laughs> exactly exactly like although i full hefter uh, standing on the balcony above watching down on I've, I've i've shot plenty of women that were would be be in it even one that was but uh you know what you know it's it's uh it's fun to see it portrayed that way <laughs> those loca- i'd love to have those type of locations to shoot in those would be fun yeah well, yeah, heck yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't, right? <laughs> have someone, you know, have a full staff. <laughs> but uh, again, like we said, look, we brought up last week, Lily James. Lily James, again, you know, throws down, I think, a career changing performance in this episode. So I think. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no. She, she's Emmy, see, Emmy, Emmy, Emmy bound uh, with that. Yeah. Emmy bound. And of course, uh, you know, where movie directors are taking note because you I actually so. think you're watching Pam. I mean, she's totally, I don't know if, if you're familiar totally with her If she can totally immerse herself in a role like that. Yeah, like I watched her on Downton Abbey. She's totally fits Downton Abbey. So when I heard she was doing this, I went, oh, okay. And then, yep, knocked it out of the park every episode. You know, uh, totally. I, I think that, uh, I think, you know, she, she, you could put her now, uh, after seeing this, Put her in any role, and she will. She will become that. That's uh, I, I've. I think uh, she's she's just phenomenal. Yep, here, here, exactly. Yeah. Well, short episode, short review. Yep. <laughs> well, on to next week. I think there's only eight episodes, so I think there's only two left. I believe. Yeah. So uh, let's get into the movie review of American Underdog, the Kurt Warner story. I love this movie. Uh, Zach Levy finally won me over. Um, this was incredible. I, uh, I don't even know where to start. Like I was, I don't know about you. I remember watching this specifically because I was in Australia in the year 2000. So when this, yeah. we watched it, we had to watch it early in the morning. We were started watching at like 7 a.m. We were drinking beer. So I remember it vividly, but... In Australia, no one follows American football. So I didn't actually know the Kurt, the full Kurt Warner story at all, you know, like at all. So and mm-hmm. seeing it unfold uh, before your eyes is a uh, man. Did he go through some, some ups and mostly downs. <laughs> the epitome of perseverance. Exactly. Like they said, uh, five years before. So in 1995, five years before Super Bowl, he was, he was bagging groceries at that high V like. Mm-hmm. Or, or stock in the shelves. He was doing that. And I mean, the greatest undrafted NFL player of all time, the only an undrafted NFL like Super Bowl winning quarterback ever. So this, that's to win a Super Bowl in his first season. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Came no, from this, are- this... arena football, but you know, uh, I love, do you like this movie? I hope you did. I love it. Oh no, I, I love this. And I mean, yeah. it's a cl- cliche. I'm a sucker for an underdog movie, especially an underdog football movie. Um, oh yeah. 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 And like the whole, the whole, how they, op- I love how they bookended it. They open it with that one little play by Montana that everyone looked over how he stayed in the pocket. You know, he got, he got tackled, but the thing yeah. is he stayed in the pocket and that was what Kurt had to learn. You know, when he was at university, he, he liked to run and gun, right. He didn't yep. like to, <laughs> yeah. You know, he's hard headed and but and then then cut to the end and he actually stays in the pocket. He gets th- tackled three quarters of the way, but gets the throw off, you know, yeah. two minutes left in the Super Bowl. And so I like how they I mean, is it me or does Zach it. Levy look bigger in this than he did in Shazam? Yeah. No, 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 no. He uh, he fit the bill. Uh, I mean, yeah. every everything about this, the, his, his his performance was great. I mean, from, you know. <laughs> not liking country and trying to, you know, being brought into the country bar. And uh, what's funny is I, I, I can, I can relate to that. Cause I had a buddy of mine that used to drag me into country bars and I hate country. So it's like, you know, uh, just watching that is just like, Oh, I've, I've lived this before, you know? Well- well, he, yeah, he he did it for Brenda, you know, little Anna Paquin played his future wife <laughs> yeah. in the Mione. So, but yeah, uh, whew, and she, you know, talk about it. She's, she had her own struggles too, right? A single mom, yeah. a, a yeah. legally blind kid. I mean, uh, oh, and, and like he stepped up and he became like everything to the, to, to that family. And like, 
not everybody will do that, at least not nowadays. You know what I mean? No, no, no. And that's but the struggle that that whole scene with the uh, God, where they ran out of gas and he had to run uh, in a snowstorm. I'm like, oh, yeah, it was yeah, killing me. Yeah. I'm like, thank I'm God like, I knew the ending of this movie because if this wasn't going to have a happy ending. You know, I was and like the, the, the letter, the letter he, he the, the the his son, the son get, sent to him. And, you know, he went to get gas in the snow. I mean, I was crying. Like ugly yeah. crying when when I when I read that it was just like, man, like oh, if no, you it, if you don't just puff up with the power of Superman after that, you know, and just go get it, how can you not? You know what I mean? Wow, the the thing that got me was like I I watched and I just rewatched it again. The ending of that movie, like this movie, introduced me to a song, a twelve year old song I've never heard. I'm going to say it here because it deserves prop. Josh Ritter change of time. So that whole ending montage that was, I don't know if you were listening to that song, but I'd never heard it before. It's 12 mm-hmm. years old and it just fit perfectly with that, with that whole, like, you know, win, winning his first game at the Rams and then cuts to the Super Bowl and, yeah. you know, yeah. and then going into the stands, kissing his wife, you know, this is, this is us. We did this, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> and like, you know, also, like for her to be like, be who you're supposed to be. We will figure it out. Well, yeah, well, you that, know, that and essentially like, caused her to break up with him at one point because she didn't. She felt she was holding him back, you know, from yeah. achieving his dream. And thank God they came to their senses. But uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he she was the reason he 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 took those risks, right? She she told him to be thing. I mean, he was so against arena football. And then, you know, next thing you know, hey, he, hey, he's out in the hayfield uh, practicing, you know. Well, yeah, that thing did translate when all the scouts were, were, were telling Dick Vermeil he's crazy. You know, Dick Vermeil played by the great Dennis Quaid, you know. Yeah. Does, are you sure this, you know, like, well, Jesus, I mean, look how fast they had to get off the, uh, <laughs> like how many times he missed the snap, right? Like how yeah. quick you got to be in arena fall. You know, you have less time to throw the 50 ball. 50 yards and yeah, yeah. <laughs> not only, not uh it's like eight yards thinner. Yeah. Something like, like that. And why why would that not translate? <laughs> yeah. I mean, when he got on the NFL field, it was probably like, oh, are you kidding me? Like, this is easy. Like, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I've got all the time in the world to stay in the pocket. I don't have to worry about the snap, you know? <laughs> Call what, 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 what did he what did he say uh he said what when he was with the rams oh why is it that nfl quarterbacks are so uh oh so, oh, so slow or yeah uh, yeah 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 he was wondering why the other players weren't fat weren't as fast as him or something yeah exactly <laughs> you know like <laughs> on his first day <laughs> you know pop warner <laughs> it's like yeah, yeah. <laughs> no nah, i mean uh, every aspect of this game of this football of this movie <laughs> game football yeah. every aspect of this movie was was so well done um the the play sequences everything and i mean one of the things he, they showed is his ability to thread the needle yeah. you know he he find his he'd find his thing he's like like the like they said he has a howitzer for an arm and he's like just puts it right between the defender's arms into his receiver's arms, you know, like, yeah, the man, coach, the coach that didn't, didn't like him is like when he gets that throw off during the first game, perfect. You know, you see the spiral, yeah. the shot of the ball spiral and he's like, perfect. <laughs> well, you know, it was so, it was so funny. Cause I, I mean, I got head faked by that, by the, the, the offensive coordinator, just giving him shit left, right and center. And I didn't think it was more on the motivational side than I thought it was just like. Yeah, me neither. Because he, he just we, didn't want to have this yeah, this guy we, shoved down his throat. And yeah, and he was watching. Like he knew he knew that Kurt didn't fumble that snap in practice. It, it was this, you know, it was the snap. It was the center. Self, but he took the blame. He took the blame for it. Yeah, just to it, see if he would do it. You know, no, he showed he showed so much character on that field. No, no, sir. My fault. I'll take care of it. You know, like won't happen again. You know, like he, he, he showed so much respect and, and, you know, I'm not giving up. So, you know, you, you think I did it? Yeah. Okay. No problem. Won't happen again. You know, like I'm here to play. Nothing's going to stop me from playing. You know, he's not going to argue with him. He's not going to, he's going to just, you know, until he stood up for himself and said, "You put that ball in my hands. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it all the way." 
you know, and I'm like, oh man, it's like, I, I, I want to be out on the field with this guy, you know? Yep. <laughs> I mean, I've played with some guys that have, have played pro ball and I've, I've played with, you know, some great guys. And when you see somebody like this, uh, it just, it just brings you back and you just remember how much of a character building game this is. And it's, you know, I, I loved those, those days with, uh, with those guys. And, you know, I'm still friends with a lot of my teammates and you just create a big bond and, when I saw like all those arena football guys all, you know, at the bar, just glued to the TV, watching, watching their boy play, uh, that just got to me, you know, it's like, oh yeah, can't, can't not love that. You? <laughs> well, nope, never played football, but <laughs> basketball. <laughs> no, but, but yeah, even, even will, when you play uh, sports, you know, when you yeah, play sports no, no, at a competitive well, level, you, yeah, you, no, you bond. Movie, uh, it pumps you up. It gets your juices flowing, you know? Uh, I'd put it, you know, it's probably, I'd probably say it's my second favorite football movie of all time now, you know, because it's, uh, I'd wa definitely watch it again. You know, it's, uh, it's that what's your first foot. I mean, we got a lot of football movies out there. What's oh, your first? No, oh no. Remember the Titans all the way. No, that's, which, uh, which that's way up co there. coincidentally came out in 2000, <laughs> the year, uh, Kurt Warner won his Super Bowl. So, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I've got a, I, there's a Remember few, the like Titans. I, Remember the Titans definitely up there. Invincible is definitely up there. Actually, you know what? I, I was thinking that everyone sleeps on it. I mean, it's it's a football movie for the first three quarters. Is uh, also starring uh, Dennis Quaid. Everybody's all American. I mean, that's yep. that's an early early nineties movie. But yep. I think everyone uh, sleeps on that movie. It was, yeah. it was it was pretty good showing you know the Gray Ghost to Chapel Hill and all that. And, and for me, like the the comedy slash underdog movie is the Replacements with Keanu Reeves and. Yeah, Gene Hackman. That's such a, a a wide array of people in that thing, but they make them look like athletes, and it's just like, oh yeah, <laughs> it's whitey. Big big thumbs up for me. Um, yeah, American no, Underdog. no, definitely, definitely a good football movie to if you if you want to just sit there and just want to cheer on someone or. You know, why, you, you got to want this guy to make it. And that's the beauty of this movie. Yeah. Definitely thumbs up. Way up. Now, let's get into the Kings, man. So, you, <laughs> so as you told me, you never watched the first two. Have you no. since watched? Or no, just you only watched I only watched one. the one. And Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so this shows you the start of The King's Man. So it takes place just before World War One. directed by Matthew Vaughn, who gave us Kick-Ass. And, of course, you must have noticed the odd Kick-Ass character in this movie. Uh, <laughs> which I'm sure you you caught the relation there, right? No, actually, I didn't. Ar Aaron Taylor Johnson, no? Who was he playing? He was the guy who uh, the son... Uh, forced him to take his identity they switched identities oh that was him i didn't yes. recognize yeah, him. yeah that's kick-ass oh okay yeah. well i liked you know i i think this is an okay franchise but this movie like i thought the the action sequences in this movie were were top-notch when the hell do you ever see a russian dance mixed in with a you know a pretty awesome you know choreographed fight scene you know like yep. that's that's yep. just one of the uh solid slick action scenes but uh, what do you think overall? Did you like this movie or no? Well, while those were really well done and everything, I think they took an hour and a half too long to get to the last half hour of what you really wanted. Well, let's talk about the big the big thing you never see in the movies. I don't know about you. I was shocked to hell when they when they did what they did or just before the third act. How about you? You if you probably know what I'm talking about. But, right? Let's where see his, if you do. his son where his son got killed? I, yeah, I was, that took me so aback. I'm thinking, wait a minute. Did they say he had a metal plate at the beginning of the movie? Yeah, that's what happened. The bullet didn't go in. Like, I'm like, this never happens. You never see this in a movie. Like, like what see, the hell? To, to me, that whole first hour and a half could have been done in a 10 minute montage. Well, honestly, yeah. like I, I, I think they, the, they took way too long to tell the whole 
thing of him protecting his son. Well, yeah. After more than his ha- wife died. More than half of the runtime of this movie is concerned with like the nature of war and the importance of peace, <laughs> which is well, really pre- prevalent today. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. So it's the Duke of Oxford's struggle with his son's quest to fight for his country. So yeah. basically, I mean, yeah, the, mo- the mob that, makes him that promise That literally him. was an hour and a half. Yeah. 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 More than half. More than half of, of the movie. Yeah. Was yeah. concerned with that. You know, it took an hour and a half for him to get to the point where he's like, no, we have to stop this. And they actually get down and do something about it. So, you know, that get down and do something about it is what you're waiting for the whole movie. Finally, they did it and they got it done in half an hour. So what does that say about the whole storytelling thing? Okay, you got to show that the the the, the, gen- the the general got killed and he was, you know, just to play up the, the, uh, the villain. But... Ah, you really, it just, it, for me, like I'm sitting there going, really? You get to, oh, more? Well, fuck. Like you really could have summed that up in a 10 minute montage and then got a little bit more into um, the staff and the network and the, and the whole thing. Um, and him, you know, getting out of his stupor. You could have, actually, you could have got, you could have done without the stupor. Yes, he's mourning and whatnot, but it, it was the kick in the ass that he needed to get well, to go and go and do what needs to be done. Well, let's focus on what you like. So you like the action scenes, though. I, I mean, thought how, the action how, scenes was thing. How, uh, how good was Reese Iffins, who was basically unrecognizable? Uh, I thought it was another actor. I, that was, that was Reece, Reece Iffins as Rasp, Rasputin. I mean, like. <laughs> I don't know who Reese Iffins is. Oh, you've seen him in a zillion things. <laughs> Rise. Uh, Rise? Oh yeah, sorry, Rise. I don't know how to pronounce it. You see, wasn't he in your replacements movie? Yes, he was. That yes, was him. He's uh, he's Wiley. Oh, okay. Yeah, but and I was thinking, I was thinking this was uh this was another actor. I thought it was uh, Peter uh, Stormari no, I didn't Stormari recognize him at all. or something. Yeah, I thought it was Peter Stormari because they yeah. <laughs> looked just like him. Uh, uh, I f- I found a lo- some of it a little bit over the top. I mean, the whole pie eating thing that was kind of like, wow, okay. You know, well, I, I, yeah, well, I just knew he, he was the type of a hole to give, you know, to take small doses of poison every day to build up an immunity towards <laughs> licking like, his leg. Licking his and leg. Yeah, like, that oh, was yeah. Like, like, yeah, it was kind yeah. of way, way I'm some sure of, some uh, of it was just a little bit way. I'm sure Ray Fines was, I'm sure that was even scripted. Ray Fines just had to go with it, you know, yeah. like, oh, oh god, <laughs> and he's kind of like going almost orgasmic Rise, with it. Yeah, and I'm like sitting right. there going. Oh. Rise is, is going a little method here. You know, I'm going to be able to talk to him the rest of the shoot. Okay. <laughs> and I kind of figured out, but did you figure out uh, who, um, oh, Morton? I mean, you know, I kind of, I kind of guess because Matthew Good, again, he's a top tier actor. They they were hardly showing him. So I, I kind of deduced that he was the, uh, the Scottish guy. Um, yeah. Actually, um, I didn't pay attention to anyone who was in the movie. I like, I didn't oh, okay. look at any of the credit. I just, Went in. I knew, I knew Ray Fiennes. Um, well, he knew Charles Dance from uh, Game of Thrones played Kitchener. Kitch. Uh, he was. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Last, You knew that. I, I, yeah. I didn't know his name, but oh, I, okay. I knew I knew his face. Yes, I. I there, there. I recognize those guys, but I, I mean, you know, Stanley Tucci was in it too. Well, just at the very end, really. Yeah. Right for the uh, the whole Merlin and the yeah, King Arthur's the, court. Well, he was also the he was the American ambassador. Yeah. After yeah. he after he uh, yeah. subdued Matahari. Well, I like how they yeah I like how they stuck Matahari in there. And then did you watch the end credit scene? <laughs> no. Oh well, the guy that shot the Romanovs. So this, but most of the stuff really happened. Like um, like um, the guy that shot the Archduke of Ferdinand. That was his actual name that they used. Gavrilo Princip. Matahari, right. of course, was a spy. But um, when the Romanovs were shot, remember the guy was posing them for a photo. And yeah. Then he sh- that, uh, well, that's how the Romanovs were killed. But that's actually in the end credit scene. That's uh, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> they, oh, they okay. thank him for that mission uh, because our buddy from um, Falcon and Winter Soldier there, Daniel Bruhl, he's he's in the end credit scene. Oh, uh, OK. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, him, him I recognized. Yeah. Well, like I said, for the most part, it was just like. I was just going right on the story. I wasn't even paying attention to who was in it and whatnot. I mm-hmm. recognized some faces, but it wasn't. Uh, I didn't know their names. Well, possibly you enjoy the uh, the, the first two because uh, it's possibly present, de- but, present I mean, day. And- but like I said, like they, they, I don't mind the the period piece of that kind, but it's just like they just w- took way too long to tell that story. Um, that could have been wrapped up a lot sooner. They could have thrown a little bit more 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 meat into it, like the, the you know the fighting scenes and all that sort of stuff. You know, the the climbing the mountain like a goat. 
Yeah, like I know goats are sure-footed, but there's no way that goat. Remember how the goat was between the crevasse? <laughs> yes, yes, there? Like, yes. there's no way in hell. I don't care what you say. Any goat has ever attempted that. I do. Yeah. Yes, I have seen photos where you think, "What the hell?" But no, nothing like that. That was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. But that whole the plane, you know, before he jumped and parachuted to say, you know, getting caught in the wing. I thought, well, yeah. okay, that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. No, no, but that, I mean, that's the 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 thing you were you you were geared up for. Right. That's the kind of thing you you want yeah. to see the action again. You want to be entertained. You know, a whole third, an hour and a half of a guy overprotecting his son. A little bit too much. I mean, they set up plot points in there throughout, but they could have done that in a shorter time. That's my my only uh, ick about this about this movie. OK, so a thumb half, halfway up. No. <laughs> you get you get you get the handshake, you know that, that oh, okay. little. Got it. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, well, uh, in, uh, in good news for Canadians, because normally it's Amer- you Americans that get stuff before we do. We we finally found out where Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Punisher, Luke yes. Cage, and the Defenders are going. They're going to Netflix, but Netflix in Canada. Ho, ho, ho. For once, we get something no, it's going before to Disney you Plus. Guys. Well, yeah. Sorry, Disney Plus Canada, not Disney Plus U.S. or anywhere yes. else. Disney Plus Canada. So for once, sorry, Americans, you guys get everything else first. This is our turn. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, was, I, I was, uh, we didn't have to wait long for that. I mean, no, they, well, I assumed we were going to get it last. But when when they said Canada, I'm like, what the heck? I mean, I mean, even the announcement that it was moving to Disney Plus. Well, I mean, yes, so I knew it was going to wind up there. I just thought we were going to get it last. Yeah, well, last I, I, didn't th- I, yeah I didn't think it would end, actually end up on Denny, Disney Plus anywhere. That oh, quickly. No, well, yeah, March. No, no, no. I, d- definitely this year. Sure, yeah, later. No, I'm thinking like, you know, September, October, you know, just to pad it a little bit, but right away onto Disney Plus. Woo. And I mean, I've been watching a, lo- a little bit of Charlie Cox on doing a bunch of interviews and whatnot. He's he's so jazzed to get back into this character. Like you, you saw Spider-Man, right? Yes. Like. What? How was his? How was his? Uh, his cameo? Was it like just? You got oh. it spoiled for you? Oh, I know about it. I just okay. Uh, well, no. So did I. So did I before. But yeah, the movie. You know. But uh, it it kind of broke my heart because I, I I read an article where he said that he didn't get any reaction when he snuck into a theater, and I just want him to know if he's listening that no, no. You know, people were stunned. You know, Charlie, that you were, and they were too overcome with joy because even though I knew I knew about it, I was. St- Nothing. That was my favorite scene because it finally happened when, yeah. you know, when we didn't think it would happen. It was everything for me. So people were just probably stunned, Charlie. <laughs> Trust me. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> More for than sure. excited that you entered, uh, you know, the whole <laughs> and like, whatever. Now, now, now it's like, OK, give me Barenthal. Give me Barenthal. Come on. He's got a new, a new show on on YouTube. It's called YouTube. Real Deal. Yeah, called Real Deal. It's uh, like a podcast on YouTube. His brother is, I don't even know, his brother is like a, a, a world-renowned cancer, like oncologist, like, and it was a Division One sports. And he's like, I just saw the trailer was interviewing his brother because his brother does so much in cancer research that I, I'm the reason why you were D1 baseball, D1 football. <laughs> I pushed you. I was hard on you. I'm like, geez, Berthal's got a show now on YouTube. <laughs> oh, you know cool. what? Cool, but as, as soon as as soon as uh, Disney opens up the checkbook, he's like he's putting the vest on. Oh yeah, for sure. But he's he, putting the he's, skull on, but he doesn't want it. He said he'll do it, but it's not going to be the you know quote unquote Disney version. You know, he wants the Netflix version. You know. Oh I'm yeah, sure. well the thing is, is that the the, the Marvel they they can't not do it. I mean, they're gonna they're giving they're giving uh, Deadpool an R rating. They're giving. Uh, they're looking at the R ratings on a couple of other things. So uh, you know what? It, it, it's going to be everything that we always had and always wanted. So, yep. I mean, uh, Punisher, Daredevil, and Wolverine crossover. Who wants make, that? Make it happen, Feige. Or Wolverine, Ghost Rider, Punisher. All right. Don't get worked up. Let's talk about <laughs> next week. Next week, guys, we're going to have the review of, of uh, season two of Picard for you. Episode one, of course, which comes out March 3rd. So Mark and I will watch that. And the boys, March 4th, Diabolical, the animated uh, 
Yeah. Well, Jim, we're going to have that so that we'll have two new shows there to review for you. And uh, Mark's agreed to watch HBO's The Rise of the Lakers Dynasty <laughs> called Winning Tie. Mark, are you going you, to, out of curiosity, be watching season 42 of Survivor? Yes or no? No, I stopped watching what? Survivor around season okay, I, nine. I thought you might. I thought you might want to. Okay, why, why, so, why would I want to? So we can review it, but if you don't want to, that's fine. I was just curious. I know oh, you're going to watch Halo on March 24th, so that's well, a no-brainer. Yeah, so yeah. I was just asking did, if you plan did, to watch Survivor. Did Did you have a look at Vox Legends of Vox Machina? No, no, no. I have uh, too much, too many shows to watch that you are not watching to watch that. Trust me, and I've got two more that start this weekend that you. You said you're not going to watch. Super pumped. You know, you no. didn't want to watch the story of Uber. You didn't want to watch the uh, Elizabeth Holmes uh, one on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> you're kind of hamstringing me here, bud. Okay, well, that doesn't mean uh, you can't watch the ones that I want to watch. Well, no, well, hey, I watch Major. You're, you're, you're talking this obscure cartoon on Amazon. I'm giving you like, you know, which, which are people are probably going to get nominated for Emmys for. You're like, no, no, no. But that's fine. That's cool. But I'm watching. Not everything that gets, watching, a, gets, gets awards is actually worth it. Well, no, just to you, but if they win the award, <laughs> they win the award. I'm not, I'm not going to get you into the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I'm watching season four of that. I know you're, you know, I know you're not going to watch Raised by Wolves on HBO Max. You know, I'm saying I watch much, much more TV than you. Like, so, you know, I honestly, I don't have time yet for, for that, that one uh-huh. mention. But, uh, um, for those, those that are listening that want to watch it, I say it, watch it. It is a fantastic animated animated uh, series it's the first season had 12 episodes it was fantasy with you know nudity and violence and all kinds of stuff it was gnomes and elves swearing saying fuck you you know it is it was absolutely fantastic so if you're in the realm for a fantasy cartoon definitely worth watching it's sort of like the fantasy version of invincible you heard the man and go watch the korean zombie zombie show all of us are dead still on netflix help yourself <laughs> there you have our reviews there you and go and we'll be back next week again like i said with picard and uh the yep. boys diabolical two new shows little, for you. Little, little sad news again this week sally oh. kellerman yes sally from kellerman Mash. yeah yes oh, yeah rest back in to peace. school she was That's in right. back to school as well Yes. Yeah. Like I said, the original Star Trek. Yeah. The original Hot Lips Houlihan. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be missed, man. They're starting to uh, drop, right? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just worried for the day that, you know, the last last real big celebrity we have is Bieber. No, there's still a lot left uh, <laughs> we have to go through, so don't worry about that. <laughs> Do not worry, sir. All right, gang. So for... I'm assuming we're we're done with the news. We got no more news. Yes. Well, no, that was all the latest, uh, you know, and then some. All right. So you can find us on social media, our YouTube channel, search Butcher Bay Rejects. You can find us on Twitter at Bay Rejects. You can find us on Facebook at Butcher Bay Rejects and also at Butcher Bay Rejects on TikTok. You can find us on our website as well, butcherbayrejects.com. And also find us on all the podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Alexa Tune In, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Spotify, and Pandora. This has been Butcher Bay Rejects. I'm Mark. I'm Greg. See you next week, nerds. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.